know what this is. No, they don't. Well, they do now. It's they should the be title. able to read the title. Yeah, it is in the title. It's the Elder Scrolls Six Top 15 Things It Needs to Actually Be Good. Like, things that need to be in the game to make it go away, cat. Uh, <laughs> to make it go away. <laughs> to, make it- <laughs> to make it good. That was the cat that ran by the microphone. You should all be honored. <laughs> okay, moving on. Yes, let us get started without further delay, Dave. Number 15, and at the bottom of the list, really, I think it might be necessary to have higher up. Uh, player actions have an impact on the world around them. Like more than just a guard saying you did something. Oh, well, they didn't even say that in Skyrim. Well, it said for some things. For some things, but then they, even after you defeat Aldwin, and they know you can shout, they think they're the Dovahkiin. Or they say, maybe I'm the Dovahkiin. Yeah, that's what they say. Maybe I'm the Dovahkiin. They think they're the Dovahkiin. No, you're not. You're not the Dovahkiin. Um, no one seems to recognize anything you do in Skyrim. You know, they'll make comments about uh, the Bard's College, or you know, maybe the, you know, College of Winterhold, or the Companions. They make little tiny well, I, comments. I, about I, I it. like the one. If you do that one Daedric quest, they'll start saying. There's a couple Daedric quests you do. It looks like you're growing fur. Another one. That said, that was for the Companions. Because the werewolf. Yeah, actually, I think it's this one you become a werewolf. And then there's another one, um, your breath smells like death. If you do that one ring quest, I think. Right, and these little lines are all that are in the game that really show that you made an impact. Nothing else. Like, even the Civil War quest, yeah, a few things get destroyed, but not much happens. Mm-hmm. No one really recognizes, the guards don't recognize you, even though, you know, you got promoted to what, was it Legget? Legget? Something. It, it just... You have no impact in the world. Oblivion did a better job. In that regard, Oblivion is a better game which than sad. Skyrim, which is very sad. Because Oblivion's I... terrible. Oblivion is the bottom of the barrel. No, that's Arena. Um, <laughs> well, it's because it's unplayable. It's not really... It's playable. No, Oblivion, I give Oblivion a ton of flack, but I still like the game. But for the love of God, Skyrim should have improved things, and they didn't. They made it worse. Uh, I, I was going to say, one of the major things they could do, now I doubt they'll do this, and this is probably something modders will have to put back in, is or back in, just put it in, is there was an excellent mod for Skyrim, I forget what it was called, called like the Congre- some hall or something, and basically for everything you did, every quest, there was a special thing that happened in this hall. Yeah, it's better um, than nothing. And like, I really liked it. It actually had a special place for every special item. Everything had a place. Every right. book. Um... Well, in, in like Oblivion, if you do the main quest, you get a special set of armor from the, you know, the ar- local armor. He'll make you a special set of armor, and the guards will let you get away with a little bit of crime. Not anything major, obviously, but, you know, a couple small things here or there. They'll clear that up for you, they say. Uh, you become the Knight of the Nine. People look up to you. They say, you know, you look important, and you have this whole citadel full of knights who go out and actually fight things. It wasn't too much in terms of what happened. Mm-hmm. But it was better than just little one-liners that, you know, don't even recognize you. No one cares what you've done. In Morrowind, you got a better reputation than the Ordinators after becoming the Narrow Marine. Huh. Every time you spoke to them about it, their reputation went up. People were nervous about speaking to you. You had a, you know, people had higher dispositions towards you. You had to ease your time buying things, all that kind of stuff. In Skyrim, the only thing you get is those little one-liners. That's kind of bogus. And annoying. It is annoying, and while the other Elder Scrolls games didn't do too much, we want to see something great in the Elder Scrolls 6, so you complete the main quest and people freaking recognize you, for starters. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe some things that happen, maybe if the city got destroyed it gets rebuilt, that'd be great. Just make the player's actions have an impact in the world. If I become a guild leader, people, people should, should freaking respect it. that. Yeah. Okay, well number 14 is more meaningful quest lines. And basically, this this, that, all that means is really more quests that are handmade. Well, not just more quests that are handmade. More quests that actually mean something in game. In Skyrim, again, because it's the most recent one, we're going to pick on that one. A lot of the guild quests, you know, aside from the main story ones, were simple fetch quests. Or kill thing quests. Or kill things quests. And they were, except the Dark Brotherhood. Except the weird. Dark Brotherhood. And they were just radiant quests. Mm-hmm. And while Radiant Quests have a place in the game, they should not be... The main game. They should not be the main game, they should not be the main fodder for guilds, and really they should only be when you get to the top of a guild and literally have nothing else to do because you're the freaking leader, so someone's got to do something. And you should be able to assign them to people, of course. We have both a guild and quest video you can go watch for that. Yeah, uh, you should be able to... There should be... When you get to the top, there should be paperwork missions. 
heroic missions. <laughs> that would be funny. It'd be a nice little touch for immersion, but we want the quests in-game to be more meaningful and less about the Radiant quests. They actually have to feel like they were created by somebody else. Mm -hmm. Not this computer-generated algorithm that says, this person wants you to get, you know, X this item from item X from... place. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of going to the same Dwemer Ruin and same Drografil tomb over and over and over for a stupid book that the same guy keeps losing. <laughs> Again, Radiant Quests are okay, but I want more handmade, meaningful, detail, in-depth quests. And the other thing when I say meaningful is when you go, say... Just guild. If it's in the next game, I don't know what they're gonna do with that. There's mm. gonna be something though. Let's just say it's the Mages Guild. And you wanna do a quest, they give you a quest to fetch a cure for somebody who's sick in the temple. And they're laying in a bed, they're sick, you see them, they're doing the whole sick animation, whatever. <laughs> sick animation. <laughs> whatever it is. You go get the potion, that person should get up out of the bed and actually walk around town and enjoy life. Instead of just still being there. Yeah, because in Skyrim there were quests. Well, you could go and get stuff for people to help with healing and whatnot, and I think it was mostly with the Temple of Kenemath? The one in Whiterun. Yeah. And they still lay there. They're still sick. They're still dying. Like, they, it, the quest means nothing. you said nothing. I cured them. Why yeah. are they there? It, it means nothing in Skyrim to do a quest. Literally nothing. I want to see that change in the next Elder Scrolls. And again, the Elder Scrolls series hasn't been too good on performing world changes, even though we just mentioned world changes. But... It's time to change Bethesda. It's time to make the Elder Scrolls great again. Let's do it! Number 13. We would like to see better guilds in the next Elder Scrolls games. Well, the next Elder Scrolls game. Because uh, the guilds in Skyrim are just awful. Yeah, they were probably one of the worst parts of the game. I, mean, I don't want to say that because there were the, the Thieves Guild was better and Dark Brotherhood's one was the best. Because it had the more different quests in the other games, but or other guilds, but you know, definitely better guilds. Yeah, and even though the Thieves Guild had a pretty good, you know, cohesiveness, it was well made. You couldn't do anything about Maiden Blackbriar. You couldn't change the fate of the guild really, even though they talked about it. It just was more of a you know dialogue thing and not an actual thing that happened. And don't even get me started on the College Winterhold and Companions. The Companions' are... final quest mm -hmm. was okay. It was pretty interesting. But for the majority of the guild, the guilds are just awful. And you just climb to the top after only a couple quests, and they were real short. Yeah, it goes Fighter's Guild, Mage's Guild, Thieves' Guild, Dark Brotherhood. <laughs> Unless I'm forgetting one. I don't think I am. Bard's College? <laughs> that was just awful. Yeah, the Bard's College wasn't very good either. Well, it were, wasn't really meant to be a... I know, but still, it, there could have been more to it, and there could have been more guilds. You yes. Know, you look at... Morrowind had a lot more guilds, had a lot more joinable factions. Mm -hmm. And they had storied quest lines. Each one of them had handcrafted quest lines that you could do, and you go to different guild halls and get quests from different guild hall leaders. In Skyrim, other than the Dark Brotherhood, I think they all had one guild hall, right? Dark Brotherhood had two. two. Two, but you couldn't go back to the other one after they moved. Right, but it still had at least a change of scenery. Mm -hmm. The love of all that is sacred and holy. The guilds really need to get better. I know a lot of people say, well, it's more of an action series now, and it's just more fun to do things quick. No. We're losing content, folks. I don't care what your excuse is. Content is disappearing from the guilds. The rewards are minimal. You're the guild leader real fast. It's just boring. We need to have better guilds in the next Elder Scrolls games. We need to have more guilds. We have a guilds video, by the way. You should go check that out. Link in the description. Oh, yeah. Okay, number 12. A better economy. Something that's actually somewhat interactive. Um, or, you know, changes with how you buy things in a certain area. And how trade goes between certain cities, city mm -hmm. relations, guild relations. Cities have different economies. Now it's getting a little advanced. Basically, the very lit basic thing, just, just go to Fable 1. Fable 1 had an actual economy. Sort of. Um, sort of. It was very minimalistic. Very minimalistic, but it, that that would be fine. Just something, a little something. We would like to see more depth. I mean, Skyrim had this whole investor's perk. I think it goes in Oblivion as well. We can invest and people have more gold, but... That is not an economy. Fallout 3 had that too. If Fallout New Vegas might have it as well, I can't remember. Yeah, that's not that's not really an economy. We would like to see more depth to it. Again, 
Fable style at minimum, but I want to see different... You know, we talk about things in the world being interactive in different videos, mm. how we want things to change and whatnot. Guild relations and town relations between each other should be something that's variable, that changes. And as they change, the economy should change based on that. If you're associated with this one town or this one guild, and you want to go buy something, prices are going to be worse for you if they don't like you. And that's mm. not just a disposition thing, it's just they don't like the guild. They might like you as a person, but, you know, you're part of this guild, we have to charge you more for some kind of maintenance fee or whatever. And that's, again, Guild opposition fee. <laughs> guild opposition fee. And again, it's just a little thing. And, you know, maybe it's supply and demand. You want a bunch of something, you can get a bulk price on it, buy all the fish except for one that Bellathor has, and then come back and that single fish he has left is worth a lot more in gold. So you have to kill Bellathor. One. You kill Bellathor to get a fish. I just kill him anyway. But uh, <laughs> that's not the point. <sighs> Some kind of economic interaction. It doesn't necessarily have to be what we mentioned. We just want to see an economy that develops and evolves and that you can have an effect in. Mm -hmm. The way you buy and sell things can have an effect. And I've said this, I don't think I've said this before, but, you know, just in case they do throw a curveball with a game, let's say it actually has, like, two regions in it. Like, I've, like I, I said before, Akavir might actually be mainland a Akaviri. A and that's how you say that, right? It's, it's that the Akaviri are the people. Akavir is the land. Akavir, and then maybe some area on the mainland, like Black Marsh, or maybe Black Marsh plus a bear. They're, they can have di different currencies, um... Well, yeah, between two different, yes. full different worlds. I mean, Black March isn't even part of the Empire anymore, Fall. We know they're not going to use Septums because that's an Empire thing. Use scales of our enemies. They could do something like that. And, you know, before you say it's not going to be multiple provinces, Daggerfall was in both High Rock and Hammerfell. And ESO has a crap ton of Yeah. Least. I mean, you never know. If it's if it does happen to be a Black March with the southern part of Morrowind, and the southern part of Morrowind happens to be in Dunmer control for whatever reason, you know, maybe they took it back, who knows, they could both use different currencies and have something different with that. Just ideas we're throwing out there. Mm -hmm. Again, none of these have to happen the way we're saying. We just, just want an economy. Just something like that. Yeah. yeah. Come on, give us an economy. Number 11, and I'm probably wording this the worst way possible, but I want a better world environment. What that means is I want politics to be part of the game. I want power struggles between guilds and guild members and guild halls. I want things in the world to actually feel alive, like people are doing things. Because in Skyrim, we have, the, you know, the basic system, people go to bed, yeah. you know, they get up, they eat food, they cook, whatever, they sell stuff. That's pretty basic, and it's the same thing every day. But yeah, they should have more of a actual schedule and do things. You know, well, yeah, they already do things on a schedule, Dave. Well, I mean... But things should change. Yeah. You know, as the year goes on, you have four seasons, right? Uh, I was going to mention uh, Stardew Valley. I don't know if you know this. Go to the wiki. Their routine every day is different and changes based on the year and season. So, something like that. Well, uh, I was going to say seasonal-based things. Like, in this is just a small thing, but farmers go out during planting season and plant and water, and then during, you know, the season where they're supposed to be gathering the crops, whatever that is in the Elder Scrolls universe, they go out and they gather crops. They actually take the plants, they disappear from the ground. Mm -hmm. You can't harvest them. You can't harvest them, yeah. They actually take them in the winter, there's nothing. It's just a cold, hard ground. That would be really nice. That would be very nice. You know, it, small things like that would be great, but I do want to see bigger things like political struggles, and depending on where it takes place, it could be Black March, it could be Hammerfell, both have different political groups. Mm -hmm. I mentioned this in the first take of this video, uh, that I think that they should introduce some sort of system, I've mentioned before, like the Shadow of Mordor political system. Mm -hmm. uh, you should be able to run for office, you should be able to sponsor other people to run for office, you should be able to bribe people in city councils, or as we mentioned before, maybe this place, whatever, if the empire's falling apart, maybe they actually have somewhat of a democracy. People get elected. Mm -hmm. um, so there should be all sorts of different aspects to that. Hell, if they wanted to release a political thriller game that didn't really have much combat, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> Dave would be okay with that. He loves politics. But, you know, he's not wrong. There should be things like that. And again, we mentioned player actions affect the world. This should go on whether or not you interact with it, but if you do interact with it, if you do interact with the political and power struggles, they should change based on your interactions. 
mm -hmm. whether how severely they changed would depend on you, how much you well. actually interact and what choices you make, but it should certainly be there. And I know that's going on to the whole multi-branched quest system where quests have different solutions and whatnot. And that's good. And that is good, and I know Bethesda hates doing that because it makes people have to actually think. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Heaven forbid. But that would be really awesome to have that system in the world. And you don't, again, you don't have to interact with this. People might say, oh, it's too difficult. People won't like it because it'll be too hard for them. I don't but care. But you don't have to be into it. It's part of the game that you don't have to touch. All right? They have two studios now. I don't think it's too much of a stretch to ask them to put a bit more effort into the games. And I think that's a good place to start. Well, technically, they have more than two. but um... Technically. Two main studios, Dave. Two, two main ones, yeah. So yeah, we would like to see that kind of thing in the next game. It would be really awesome and would make for better immersion in the game. Okay, number 10. That's to bring back more skills and attributes. To basically fully reject the idea of Fallout 4. <laughs> Fallout 4 and to an extent... I'm going to say this and it's going to trigger people. To an extent, rejecting what Skyrim did with the health, magicka, and stamina and the limited number of skills. Now, before anybody goes off on a tangent and says, Oh my gosh, I don't want to have to micromanage my character. I just want to pick up on my health, higher stamina, and magicka. That can be an option. Because in Morrowind and Oblivion, some of the attributes you picked would increase your magicka, mm -hmm. or your stamina, or your health. So it could just automatically pick those attributes for you based on if you want to do health, stamina, or magic, or you can pick your own attributes. Yeah. Either can be possible and you can have them in the same time. That would be perfectly fine. And the reason we want attributes and skills back, we want more skills back and attributes back, period, is because, again, it adds some more depth of play. And we're not even talking about a class system, because I know people hate that. Oh my gosh, it's unnatural character progression. That's a whole nother video. We can get into that in a long debate about that. But more skills would give more variety to the game. Mm -hmm. It would give more replayability because you're going to be focusing on different things, try different play styles, and attributes just add more depth to the game. And they don't necessarily will detract from the game. You don't have to micromanage your character. You don't have to pay attention to them. You can use a Skyrim leveling system or you can go and break it down more yourself. See, I think personally, just screw the Skyrim system. I don't really care if it triggers casuals. It's, it's going to take you more time to include the more casualized system <laughs> I know, I know, but Bethesda wants to make money, Dave. They They'll make money, us. trust me. Once more traditional R RPG players see that it's more like a traditional RPG, they will they'll buy, buy it. it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and there are a lot of Skyrim fans who have gone back in the series and actually think the older games are far better based on these mechanics. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome. I'm just trying to be, quote-unquote, nice. Stop. I know, I shouldn't be. I'm being meaner I honestly, than you. That's know, rare. It is rare. Honestly, I don't want the Skyrim system in there. I've said it before. I'll you know, say it again. I, I want the class system back, honestly. But again, that's another video, and I will tear people a new one on that one. <laughs> that's not what this one's for. But we want skills to come back because, you, you know, one-handed and two-handed is not a skill. That is just your preference of how you like to hold your weapon. We want to see more diversity in the game, more possibilities for the character to play differently. And for the love of God, I want my mysticism back. I would like to see other things because we discussed economy like mercantile come back. Mm -hmm. I know people are triggered by that. Heaven forbid you have to put in a little bit of effort to your mercantile skill, even if it's just a passive skill. Mm -hmm. I want these sorts of things to come back in the game, and I really think ESO did a better job with skills than <sighs> Skyrim did in that regard because there were passive skills as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll give them ESO on the passive skills thing. I, right. I like that, but... I prefer... I, I'm not saying it should be that system. Mm -hmm. I prefer the Morrowind Oblivion system. I'm just saying, at least they did better than Skyrim, where Skyrim there's only, like, what, 21 skills total? If that? Uh, well, you know, they each branched off, so I don't really... Well, they branch off with perks you can choose, but that's not really choosing a skill. Well, yeah, I, th I do actually kind of like Skyrim's in a way, but it needs to be... Really, the best thing would be a fusion of Morrowinds and Skyrim in my mind, where you still had all the skills from Morrowind mm -hmm. and everything like that, but they were still individual perks within those skills. Yeah. yeah. Well, and part of the problem is you're like with one-handed. You can go with the long blade perks mm -hmm. or the blade perks. If you're wielding a dagger all the time, there's no way in hell you're going to know how to use a sword. 
weights are totally different, movement systems are totally different, you're going to have a little bit of an idea, mm -hmm. and that's okay to have, you know, skills kind of get a buff off of other skills. I don't mind that at all, that's realistic. But you're not going to be able to just switch to a sword and do an increased output of damage and be real good with it. Mm -hmm. That's that's the kind of thing I want. I want more skills, more individualized things. I want stats to be back in a different category for pull arms. We and want more stats, basically. More stats, more stats, more I, pen and paper stuff because we we like that kind of thing. Uh, again, I, I think I said this last time we tried recording this video. Uh, People, for the love of God, pay a monthly fee to play spreadsheets in space. They do. Uh, so I think Bethesda's. Un granted, those people don't play on console, um, but I think Bethesda's underestimating the potential of numbers and stats. I, I, I think they are. Was that a shot at console people, Dan? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Number nine, if the last one didn't trigger you enough, is better dungeons. Yes. Skyrim's dungeons were linear and they sucked. Really? There were too few of them as well. Yes, there's too few of them. This is this is the like descent to Bethesda. I sure hope they better change this. Now, granted, they didn't need like uh, Fallout Three had a ton of caves. Mm -hmm. Granted, Fallout Four did have more interior building areas, but Fallout I can't even remember how many caves were in Fallout Four. Like none, basically. Um, is that? Um, yeah, there was a ton of caves in Fallout Three, and going to Fallout Four, there was like no caves. So, and you kind of you kind of saw that a little bit same way, not as bad though between Oblivion and Skyrim. There were still definitely caves and dungeons. Well, there are caves and dungeons. I don't even care about the tile sets. I mean, the tile sets are reused in Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, even in Daggerfall. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm getting at. Just it's more um, less linear dungeons. I want them to branch yeah, off more. less linear tile sets, basically. Well, no, less linear dungeons. Tile sets is what they look like. I, I want well, dungeons that are not, you start on one end and then you exit on the other. Every single dungeon. And they all, you can't get lost. They all go in a straight line. You, there's only one way to progress. Mm -hmm. um, Morrowind actually had some pretty complex places at times. I know. They're annoying. <laughs> I mean, like, sometimes it's fine, but if everything's the same color... Well, I'm not saying all of them have to be the way. I was going to say Morrowind had some complex ones at times, and then other ones were really simple. Mm -hmm. Some ancestral tombs were real small, straightforward, and easy. I like those. Others were extremely complicated. There's one you can find a freaking boat inside of. It's a maze and a boat. I've not found that one yet. <laughs> you will. And <laughs> the only way to get out of it is to backtrack all the way. Now, I'm not saying all of the dungeons need to be that way. I'm saying there should be a variety. I want, sure, I want a linear dungeon once in a while, because... For the sake of simplicity, not everything's complex. Mm -hmm. I want a complex branching dungeon I can get lost in. Oblivion had one of those that was really cool to tie in with an alien ruin. Mm -hmm. I want dungeons where I can enter one side and exit the other. Regular caves do that. Maybe dungeons with more than one exit. Yeah, dungeons with more than one exit and more than one entrance. It, have more than one guy work in the dungeons would be great. <laughs> that poor man. And having more dungeons in general. The dungeons in Skyrim were just... They were pathetic. The Skyrim itself is not a bad game, but the dungeons were just really sad. I, that's part of why I hated those Radiant Quests, because I had to keep going back to them. Well, there was a really couple... boring. It was interesting. There were a couple that were really good. There, yeah, there were a couple that were really good. Intelligent... I never actually had... I almost... I think I can only remember one time where I had a Radiant Quest that was the same item in the same cave. Man, you are lucky. I, it was... You've never had the problems I have had I in put Skyrim. a lot of hours into Skyrim. I can't actually remember... I put quite a few in as well. I did a lot more of the Dragonborn DLC, though, than anything else. Yeah, that's actually... I, I played... I didn't play a whole lot of that, actually. <laughs> I should really go back to that. You but. should. And Apocrypha was great. Don't get me wrong. Skyrim does have its moments where it has really good dungeon, but the majority of dungeons really just felt the same. I felt like I had been there before, so I want to see more dungeons, more variety of dungeons, and have more than one poor man stuck in an office working on them. Bethesda, you can afford two or three more people in that office. The guy's lonely. Okay, number eight. Better AI. Now, this one is actually... I, I think Bethesda should, if I remember correctly, uh, Tom Clancy's The Division, actually, the newer game, had some pretty good AI. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong. It's not a Bethesda game, Dave. I, I know, but the, I'm saying Bethesda could learn from it. Oh, okay. Uh, because I remember correctly, like if you were up higher somewhere... The, the guys would run away from you and actually pick stuff up and throw it at you, and like instead, or or if they didn't have a gun, they try to find a gun. I know I could be wrong with the game; I get those games mixed up, but 
Something like that, because Bethesda is up there with Creative Assembly with bad AI. And it's not even a Skyrim problem. See, this one I'm not going to pick out Skyrim for because this has been a problem forever. Morrowind, they used to run into a rock in run in place trying to get to you, and then they'd run away and come right back to that rock. They only, like, slightly improved it. Yeah, they only slightly improved Every it. Every time. they did the same thing. Skyrim, they would do the same thing. And then people are like, oh my gosh, they've gotten so much better at the AI. No. It's it's a very minimalistic improvement. I can go to a... It's like 5% every time, If maybe. that. Maybe. If that. It's better than Creative Assembly, who say they upgrade their AI every time. And then every time, your general still runs through the pile of enemies. Because he's stupid. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, well, I, I went to the Giants camp right outside of Whiterun. Mm-hmm. And I just stood on the rock. I can sit there and kill them at level 1. Because they just run back and forth between the rock and the fire. The Giants? I, I, they don't climb on rocks. Uh, I didn't. The Giants have a pretty far reach. I've tried well, doing that. They have a far reach. You, you're on the wrong rock. <laughs> because there's some Giants there. You want a rock? They don't give a crap. <laughs> but that's another thing. They don't try to get on top of the rock. They don't try to grab you from on top of it. They don't try to whack you off of it. They don't try to hit the rock and make you fall off by vibrating it. They don't do anything. Vibrating the lot rock. Of, yes, vibrating the rock and bounce you around. Anyway, um, the, the AI in the Elder Scrolls games have been just flat out awful, and it's so easy to exploit. Like, you can unintentionally exploit the, the AI in these games. Just steal some other company's AI. It's well, easy. And I think part of it's an in, engine limitation, and I believe they're. Limitation? Limitation. Oh. It, it stings, Dave. <laughs> it, it burns. It makes my eyes burn when I see it. Um, you're like an onion taste, right? Uh, both. Put lemon juice in your eyes, Dave. It will burn. Anyway, I think it's an imi- ah, engine limitation. Mm-hmm. And I know they have hinted that they might be working on a new engine. Hopefully that fixes these things. Because if they don't, the next game just has horrible AI again. It's really going to kill things. I've seen people in Skyrim. If you go, again, the Dragonborn DLC, if you go over to the Solstheim, Time, there's a guard just standing there, and he starts walking. He's walking straight into the building. He just keeps walking right into the building, as if he's going somewhere, but he's really going nowhere. <laughs> he's getting that exercise then, though, Dad. Got it? Um, yeah. There's Now, there's the whole thing with the engine. I, I, I'm hoping... Yeah, maybe that is the case. I don't know. And even if they don't do a new engine, they can still strip it down to its base code and I, assuming you can make it better by doing that hopefully uh, if you really don't want to take the time and money to invest in a new engine which you should, you I, was, should. I was against it before but now after thinking about it after Fallout 4 success and Skyrim success they better they, they need a new engine yeah so. I, I know the shareholders are the biggest concern right now and that shouldn't be a gaming company's concern ever but spend the extra money to get a better engine so we have better AI please Number seven, we would like better dialogue. This has been an issue for a while. They keep going downhill with it, though. Because in Skyrim, you could talk to next to no one unless they had quest-specific dialogue. At least, like, in Oblivion, you could talk to the guards, mm -hmm. get directions and that kind of thing, ask questions. You know, in Morrow, you could ask, what well, latest rumors and whatnot and events. And yeah, a lot of it seemed like it was copy-paste, but actually things changed. When you had different dispositions, different diseases, different faction relations, all that kind of stuff. And in Skyrim, most people couldn't talk to you. And if they could, it was a one-liner. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be one of the rare times I admit Oblivion did something better than Skyrim. I hate Oblivion. So, moving on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, well, let's say Fallout 4 did even worse. Yeah, that somehow was just... <laughs> it did even worse. I don't know how they do these things. Oh, it had to do with the voice protagonist. Mm, and the, the little dialogue wheel. Stop trying to be Mass Effect! Yeah, stop trying to be Mass Effect. Give the character multiple options every time an NPC talks to them. If they ask them a question, you should have multiple responses. Mm -hmm. uh, they, again, should not be voiced. For the love of God, no. Don't don't even think about it, Bethesda. I know you said you wouldn't, but don't. Don't stop. There you go. <laughs> we don't want that, and we want more dialogue. And I know you're going to say voice acting costs money, and it takes up hard drive space, and it does. Don't do, don't do it. No. <laughs> well, again, Oblivion had a lot of voice acting, but also had a lot of dialogue. Mm -hmm. Most people could be spoken to. It's possible to do these things. And Just honestly, get homeless people off the streets, get them food. Well, I was going to say honestly, you can hire different people who aren't main stars in Hollywood as voice actors. Be like, yeah, people will do it for potatoes. I mean, like, well, like, look at the Skywind project mm -hmm. when people are trying to port Morrowind into Skyrim. Mm -hmm. They are making people do the voices of all the dialogue in Morrowind. 
all of it's going to be voiced. People are volunteering for this kind of stuff. Bethesda could do that, and I'm sure they could find a new file format to make the you yeah. know, voice acting smaller. Granted, I, I do understand that you have a, a quality that you want to stick to of voice actors, and I get that. But you can still get amateur voice actors that oh, yeah. are good. There are a ton of people out there with quality voices. Not us, of course. We're awful. What are you talking about? I mean, I would definitely do it because I love the Elder Scrolls, but I don't think you want to hear my voice all the time when you're playing the next Elder Scrolls game. Make your voice the next head boss guy. <laughs> Actually, that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> but still, and it's not just that. Dialogue, when it came to course specific locations, they didn't give you any directions because, again, voice acting costs. Mm -hmm. It was expensive and takes up a huge amount of the hard drive space. Well, you could have them say a one-liner, here I've written down some directions on a piece of paper and give it to you. Or just say, oh, I marked it on your map. Well, no, they always say I marked it on your map. I want directions to the place. I don't want just quest markers and whatnot. For, you know, dialogue, I want them to say, here, here's this, and you can read the directions. It saves on voice acting. It's a little bit extra dialogue. They could do that, yeah. Yeah. And again, like I said, better dialogue options for the character, instead of just having one option to say all the time, because at that point you may as well like, give the character the option to say it. <laughs> Why even give the player a choice when they only have one choice? Just force it on them at that point. Okay, number six is better difficulty options. Now, we already have a video on this, link in the description. But basically, just more than just... You a have, damage slider. Yeah, ba basically a damage slider. I'm not really sure... Well, in Skyrim, you, it wasn't even a damage slider. It was just a damage chooser. You mm -hmm. had five options. Yeah, I'm not the best at this. Probably more something like Doom. I, I don't know, maybe. But something even more like the special voice options you have during dialogue. Like for perception, those even get harder and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so... But well, more go. difficulty in, you know, if, if they bring crafting back, which... I'm, Pretty sure they will. More difficulty yeah. in making things. Maybe there's a chance you could fail if you have the difficulty slider up, or mm -hmm. the difficulty option that you can fail making something and you just burn yourself instead and feel like an idiot. Uh, more difficulty, as Dave said, with options when you're talking to people with persuasion or perception. Uh, when you're trying to sell things to people, it's going to be more difficult to get them to accept your price or when you're buying them to accept what you want to pay. Mm -hmm. we, like, we have a whole video on this. The whole idea of diseases being more deadly, being an actual threat at higher difficulties versus being practically non-existent at lower difficulties. Just something more than a damage multiplier and reducer. Because in Skyrim, if you put all the way up to legendary, things the highest you can go. Mm -hmm. Your enemies just deal more damage to you and they take less. And if you go all the way down to novice, you deal more damage. And they deal less. And I they think. deal less. It, that's not difficulty. That's just complete idioticness and I know people have commented to the effect of well you know it's not easy to implement all these things but Bethesda has a ton of money they have multiple studios they have a lot of very intelligent people working for them and I have played indie games made by one person that have better difficulty options than the Elder Scrolls and it's not a Skyrim issue it has been going on since Morrowind I think Daggerfall actually had a little bit of a better difficulty system but even that was pretty pathetic it's been a trend, mm -hmm. and we want to see that change. We want well. It's it's also been a, this is a very interesting thing. Is it's also been a trend of Dark Souls and uh, screw you difficulty guy kind of games mm -hmm. have also become popular. So I'm hoping Grand Sea Fallout Four should be was the last last generation game. I mean by that I'm most positive they started development on the 360, moved to the Xbox One. I'm hoping whatever this new Elder Scrolls game is, whatever it is, was was designed with finally the next generation hardware um, in mind yeah in mind or maybe even the next next generation hardware if, if, it's, that ever if it's launch title so uh, that should you should have a ton of room to deal with difficulty yeah, you're gonna have better you know system specs you're gonna have hopefully a better engine as we've said before uh, we want more difficulty options right now it's just kind of sad you have to add in a bunch of mods to get just the right level of what you want and, and some of those mods are BS too yeah some of the mods are BS I will say Fallout 4 had that uh, whole survival thing they added that in later though yeah they added that in later but that was an interesting twist but I want something more deep than that I want more depth to my difficulty settings I want to be able to make the game excruciatingly difficult or so easy a casual could do it yeah, and there should be actually a survival thing in Elder Scrolls. Yeah, and a survival too. thing. 
that would be nice to have as well. So better difficulty options that's not just a damage slider would be great. Number five, well, they just need to go back to a better magic system. This period. Just... Skyrim's magic system was extremely sad. I mean, we heard rumors that they were thinking about adding in a whole spellcrafting system, but they never did. Mm. That got trashed. Everything's in spell tomes and off-the-shelf books you could find. And it's just you equip it to both hands or one hand, and the number of spell effects really kind of pathetic. And some of the spells didn't even work, like clairvoyance. I broke that spell <sighs> so many times just to see if it would actually work. It didn't work all that well. I mean, like, yeah, it's it's kind of sad because there's there are a lot of mods. Now I don't know if there's any mods that add spellcrafting. I actually don't think there are. I think there be, is one. But there are a lot of mods that just add a ton of spells and uh, a lot of OP spells, which there should be at higher levels. Mm -hmm. um, so really, Bethesda, just look at the el the spell mods that people made for Skyrim, and you'll be fine, in my opinion, anyway. Well, and people like to you know hate on Morrow and say, well, the spell system was too broken. You become too overpowered. But at a certain point playing an Elder Scrolls game, part of the fun is getting to the end game level where you are overpowered. I would love to see Morrowind spells come back in the game. I want to see Levitation back, and we've discussed this before many times, and we've discussed in the Magic video how they can make that work. In fact, the Magic video is a pretty good video to go watch if you want to know about a better spell system. It's one of mm. our highest That's viewed right. videos of even, this, well, the Elder Scrolls 6. we even made that video. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the most highly viewed Elder Scrolls 6 video we have because, you know, a lot of people like the idea of better magic. It's just really sad how it's come down. Like, Morrowind. You custom make a spell of fire, frost, ice, poison, and damage health. And drain health. Why not mm -hmm. add that in too? Everything. Everything. All the effects are shown when you cast that spell. All of them. It looks freaking amazing. Granted, I'm not sure if I what I think what they should do is have custom effects. That would be cool too. Because I have a feeling in my mind that would just look stupid as hell. <laughs> well, if you use the exact same effects as in Morrowind, then yes, it would look pretty bad because, you know... Well, I mean, like, in Morrowind, different. I've been playing Morrowind, and I imagine casting a fire, ice, poison, all Vivek that kind of casts spells... that. Vivek will cast that spell. I know, but it will look stupid to me. And, like, fire cool. and ice? No. Well, it looked pretty cool in Morrowind, and you should be able to do that. I should be able to freeze and burn you simultaneously. That yeah, you should, I'm, shock. Say, I'm saying you should be able to, but it should have maybe a custom effect to it. They should make something different. Other well, than yeah, this. they can make something different. I just want you know something better than what Oblivion had with its uh, spellcrafting system. Mm -hmm. Is it just showed the first effect and everything else was just implied that yeah. it was there? I want something more unique. I want to see this visual awe, and I like how Skyrim at least did where you can cast one spell from one hand, one from another, and combine them. Mm -hmm. There was that. That's not really spellcrafting. That's actually, if you think that's spellcrafting, you're an idiot. Um, actually, I do want to mention one thing really quick. Is I want better stabs. I don't know how. There's not a whole lot of room for honestly improvement. What else can you do with stabs? Hit uh, people with them. Other than yeah, you, uh, having a melee. I, melee system with stabs. I mean, like, magical stabs, though, should have more... There should be more things to them. I'm not really sure how. Well, yeah, you can have stabs that are combined of elements and abilities. Mm -hmm. Why not have something that electrocutes, freezes, and poisons someone all simultaneously? Uh, I think one of the things I should have had was a, a flash step spell that you had on stabs, and you could dual wield stabs. I don't know. I think you could do yeah, that. Yeah, you could dual wield staves. Staves, um, staves, staves. Staffs. Staves. Screw yourself. Um, and yeah, definitely maybe, because I don't think you could, if you had two stab, staves, whatever, uh, that were the two, same thing, you couldn't combine them. Like, you could hands. Right. You should be able to do that. You should be able to do that. There should be a lot of different things you can do with magic in general. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing when they introduced using a staff to cast a spell kind of hurt the magic system because, I mean, it was good for people who aren't naturally mages. You can mm -hmm. use it if you're a warrior. But it kind of hurt it because it started taking away from the magic, from, at least from what I can see. Because ever since Oblivion, magic has gone downhill, and Skyrim is just awful. So we want more spells, we want more spell effects. Again, look at the mods, look at mods for Oblivion who added a bunch of spells. Look at Morrowind Magic, look at mods for Skyrim. Bring back Levitation, bring back Water Walking as a spell, not just an enchantment on a pair of boots. <laughs> uh, Swift Swim for Alteration casters who don't want to fortify speed, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Bring back all kinds of magic and put it in the game. I mean, heck, in Arena, you could dissolve walls with a spell. Yeah, I'm not expecting that. I'm not expecting that either. But, I mean, talk about the wow factor. Uh, you should have a spell that lets you teleport through walls. No, you should be a teleportation that spell. That is like more that doable. Mm -hmm. Granted, there has to be something to teleport to. Although, that would be funny to well, teleport through a wall and die. 
In Morrowind, you could cast an anchor for Mark and mm -hmm. then recall. Something like that could be doable within, like, say, a cave system. You're trying to get from one side to the other. You could throw a spell that, you know, where, where it lands and then cast another spell to call you to that spot. You know, That's... make a little bit more depth, a little bit more difficulty mm -hmm. to it. So it's not just straightforward, boom, I'm over here, boom, I'm over there. Add an extra step in. I, I do think it would be cool though, to have some sort of flash step to add, I don't know, something like that. Would be kind of well, cool. that'd be like a fortify speed spell or whatever, but... No, I mean like a mini teleport spell. No, I guess you could do that. I think I'd rather have it the way Fable did it, with that one that you can imbue yourself and you suddenly go real fast and they call it Assassin Rush or whatever. Uh, yeah. That would be cool I, to I'm have I'm just in picturing there. in my mind, like you have this spell in one hand, it creates a circle and then you could teleport to that circle. Uh, and then when you'd be teleported there, you'd be facing your enemy. Uh, that'd be something you had to include, was a head tracking thing for that. Yeah. Because uh, that would be really cool for really some fast paced combat. combat. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and it would definitely give you more mage playstyles and more playstyles in general. Actually, the reason I'm thinking of that is that wasn't Dishonored. That's, I'm just throwing that out there. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know there's also Shadow Mordor had some different effects and it. it looked like there would be pretty cool magic effects in mm -hmm. you know, the next Elder Scrolls I don't think game. there was anything like that. Though. Well, not like that, but different things that were in there. Basically, make magic great again. I mean, the Elder Scrolls has come a long way, just not in magic. Okay, number four, better combat. This one's pretty simple, actually. The only thing I really care about is dodging. Dodging, and we know the Elder Scrolls games are not based on combat. That is not the main reason you play an Elder Scrolls game. If that is the main reason you're playing the game, you're playing the wrong game for that. Yeah, it's mainly for immersion. It's mainly for immersion and story, but we would still like to see an improved combat system, like Dave said, enemies dodge. I'd like to see something along the lines of being able to parry an attack to you know evade all damage. Uh, we will be doing a video eventually talking about uh, combat for the Elder Scrolls 6 as its own video. And part of what I'm going to mention is shields. Blocking mm -hmm. partial damage, every shield? No. Nah. Daedric shields should be able to block 100% of physical damage. Well, pretty much all shields should block almost all damage. Well, unless I, uh, It should depend on the attack. I but... like the Dark Souls style. A tiny wooden plank shield? Your arm could get broken, Dave. Well, yeah. That, as I was saying, it depends on the attack. And I... And the shield. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, if you have a normal, just steel, like, standard shield in the game, it should pretty much protect against all physical damage. But not magical. Yes. I, I don't know if I agree with it being at steel level, because it's in game kind of thing, because people could just hold their shield up, but it's drain fatigue. So once well, your fatigue's out, you can't block it. Yeah, anymore. there's still some attacks that can do some damage, and more or less stagger you, I think, mm -hmm. would be a better thing. Not And break your damage. shield, yeah, break your block. Mm -hmm. And there's the ability that once you run out of fatigue, you drop your arm, so you're no longer blocking, because you're just too tired. And that, that's realistic. If you don't think it is, go hold the shield, I'll hit it, you'll drop it. <laughs> you will Unless drop it. Unless you're really strong. I'll take a sledgehammer, Dave. There's some people that are really... I'm just saying. <laughs> I will take a sledgehammer. Uh, and I would like to see something in combat where... The ancient Egyptians, they had the sword, right? Had a hook on it. They'd hook it above your shield, pull your shield down, and then stab you. I want to see similar effects in combat. I want to see, basically, you know, more varied combat. Oh, the only thing, cool. though, is that that does leave the Egyptian open to be also be stabbed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but you don't have to be an Egyptian. You can be any other race. It's fine. Like, I can just imagine that happening and the, sh the shield being lowered and then, Sayik! <laughs> you got stabbed, son! <laughs> or they stab each other at the same time. <laughs> but we want to see more interesting combat in the Elder Scrolls. And again, we know it's not combat heavy, but a lot of people complain about combat in every single Elder Scrolls game. I want it to be more immersive, I want it to be deeper, I want my enemies not to stand there like a stupid meat shield and actually freaking dodge for once, that would be great. Do something. Yeah, really, just do something other than swinging your, they're flailing their arms around helplessly, Dave, that's what they're doing. I'd like to see that change. Wacky, I, I want to do the wacky, wacky wavy, inflatable tube man, man, arm flailing man. I can't do the whole thing. Anyway. Whatever it is. We don't want that, we want actual combat, that'd be great. Number three is a better journal system, and we actually touched on this in the quest video, and I would like to dedicate a whole video to this sometime, but the journal system has completely fallen flat on its face. A lot of people don't think they've ever gotten this right. I think Morrowind was the closest they had, because it was more immersive, although Oblivion actually had a decent journal system too. Mm -hmm. um, for quest tracking, obviously, quest tracking purposes, there should be things like bookmarks and journals. Your well, Morrowind, I thought Morrowind just did fine. It should have a better UI, but Morrowind should be the base. Well, that's what I was saying. Bookmarks. Like, you can bookmark your quest, so you can always just turn to that quest, and all the quest-related information will be there, or you can mm -hmm. just read it like a regular journal. 
your character should write it in and put in information. It brings more immersion to the table. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't want that. I just want my quest. And just and go play, to your bookmark quest. Because you're playing the wrong game. Yeah, <laughs> you are. But, you know, that's case, just go to your bookmark quest. But for the rest of us, it's just a simple thing they'd have to type in. They, they did it in Marwin, they did it in Oblivion, even they had voice acting. And again, with the directions, you should be able to write them down. If someone hands you a page of directions, you can copy it down to your journal or to your notes or whatever. But a better journal system overall would be great. Skyrim's journal system is not existent. It is not a journal system you have at a, all. A, you have a, a mission. Yeah, you have uh, an objective log. system. It's just like a freaking first-person shooter in that regard. Go here. Successfully went here. Do this. Successfully did that. I want to see, you know, my journal has, or I have updated my journal. Mm-hmm. And stuff like that written on the screen instead. And I would like to have directions, more immersion. I, I know we're basically saying more immersion overall, but a better journal system would be more better immersion. More better immersion is better immersion. It is. <laughs> and we would love to see that. And again, there's probably going to be a whole video dedicated to this. I want to touch on it real quick though and just say better journal system would be great. Okay, number two is fewer player restrictions. Um, there, there's th- there are actually certain things that need to be more restrictions, but fewer player restrictions on um, like who you can kill. Granted, I, we've actually discussed this before. My opinion is that there should be instead of after you kill the person, give it like the first time you hit them. There's a message that says yeah. the quest critical. Because then you don't have to reload. You're just like, oh crap, and you run. Or you can be an idiot and kill them anyway. Yeah, that's your choice. Um, and of course, only the you know player character should be able to kill them if for whatever deranged reason you have. And by the way, if you're a deranged lunatic and kill them, I don't want to hear you whining, but then it ruins quests. You're a deranged lunatic and you just killed somebody. Like, Deal with your punishment. Mm-hmm. I, we discussed this in the quests video. I'm and and of, after the main mission is over, they should become killable. Yeah, and you should be able to kill them anyway. But that's not the only thing. Uh, restrictions for items. And I've seen this a lot in well, like with Skyrim. You can't get any Daedric or Dragonbone items until you reach a certain level. Um, Oblivion was the same way. In Morrowind, I can go get a freaking Daedric Nodachi or mm-hmm. Daikatana, whatever you want to call it. Daikatana. By fighting one guy and killing him, or get a regular katana by finding a mine and going somewhere in Vivek City and you know going to an abandoned place, unlocking a door, finding the guy and telling him where the mine is. That's a lot of convoluted stuff to do, but I still get a regular Daedric katana that does not scale. It will be just as good now as it is in late game. Mm-hmm. Instead, they opt for the system where everything kind of scales to you, and that's a restriction because not everybody wants to play that way. Where you start with iron and you have to work your way up slowly. Yeah, some no, people, you should be able to get your hands on some real OP crap at the beginning of the game if you want to, if you know how to. And not, yeah, I say real OP crap. Uh, there should be, I, I said this before, there should be a, a Borderlands Two style loot system. Take out the level requirements, though. Uh, like certain guns in Borderlands 2, you had to be like, let's say, level 20 to use them. Mm-hmm. Just get rid of that part. Um, you can find super overpowered stuff at the beginning of the game. Uh, you shouldn't have to, you know, wait. Yeah, like in Morrowind, again, I can go get tricked out with the Mentor's Ring, the Ring of Fine Aster, Daedric Katana, uh, the Dragonbone Curious, and all this other stuff, the Boots of Blinding Speed, all this really cool stuff at level 1. Mm-hmm. Real easily. But I can also not, and especially if you're new to the game, you're not going to know where any of that's at. You're going to have a hard time struggling. But I've, if I've played the game 50 times, I don't want to be restricted to the same old thing. I don't want it to be relegated to modders to fix either. And that's not the only restrictions. I guess Dave hasn't run into these, but I've played Skyrim for quite a while, and I've run into dungeons that I can't even enter because I don't have the specific quest for them, so there's an iron gate in front of them. Well, the iron gate thing, what it should say is it shouldn't say... It, they should do it different. I think they should still be there, but they should do it differently. Instead of literally just telling you, you don't have this quest. Well, it doesn't even tell you anything. You just run into it. It's like, what the hell? See, I haven't had that either. Uh, I don't remember anything. Anyway. Maybe I'm just blocking it out because it's so horrible. But they should have places that require special keys that you just get when you start the quest. That That's the way around this, if they really want to do it. Maybe, but again, I would like the player not to be necessarily restricted. And I know people say, but if they don't, then the items that you find in there that are related to a quest will be ruining the quest. But that's not necessarily true. They're shown with Radiant Quest. They can just drop items wherever the hell they want with a script mm-hmm. when it's time to get them. See, I think, again, I'm. you can do either way. You can just make it so, like, let's say, if there is an item that's special, 
that yeah. appears in there when you get the quest, right. or if there's an enemy that has to be killed, it for appears the quest. when the quest happens. Yeah, or it does appear; it's there all the time, and, and if you kill you. it, yeah, it, it, it wrecks you, or you somehow kill it, you complete the quest. Yeah, I shouldn't <laughs> have to be part of a guild to go to every single dungeon in the Elder Schools. And again, I'm going to reference Morrowind for this. They did it great. Yeah, you can only join one great house, but that doesn't stop you from breaking into every single building in the entire freaking game, even if you aren't part of that great house. And you might have some difficulties, people might have some objections to it, possibly, especially the bandits who are beside there. But, uh, yeah, you can still do it. There, there's no restrictions. In fact, you could ruin quests in Morrowind if you wanted to by going and finding specially named objects in caves and then selling them later on. And that would be your own stupid fault for selling a specially named item and then complaining about it, but still, restricting the player in all these ways doesn't make the game feel immersive or fun at all. It just makes it feel like... Well, a video game. Yeah, uh, the only thing I'm gonna say is if there are item restrictions, like items that you ha they want you to carry the whole time, make them weightless. Oh, they did that in Oblivion. They made them weightless, and then the Skyrim, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, we're gonna take that out. <laughs> I, I am of the camp that quest specific items should be weightless. If you have to always have them on you, you can never drop them. Although they should have their own category in the you know. They do in ESO. Yeah, they do in ESO, and they should. In every game, because I don't want to see them cluttering my inventory either. Just keep them in the quest section. Because then you don't know, you get confused. You're like, what the hell are these? <laughs> and then if you can drop them, you don't want to drop them. It doesn't say quest item anyway, anywhere. You drop drop them everywhere. And well, no, you couldn't drop them in Oblivion and Skyrim. Mm -hmm. Morrowind, you could drop quest related items. I know it screwed me over a couple times. <laughs> it was kind of fun though. <laughs> no, that when I it first wasn't. played, it was for me. But, you know, I'm not saying to drop quest-related items, although I think the options should be there, but they should be in their own category yes, called quest-related items, so if you drop them, it's your own stupid fault. For being a re-re-retard, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, just remove player restrictions. We want to actually have fun, not be dragged along the little cinema that wants to be a game. Number one, the most important thing, RPG elements. Just, just more of them. Oh, a lot more of them. And in fact, I'm going to say ESO did a pretty interesting thing, and I think they did a good job on this. When I say RPG elements, by the way, I'm not meaning necessarily, oh, magic, swords, and all that kind of stuff. That's obvious. That goes without saying. Stats, skills, all that kind of stuff. I'm meaning things that let you actually play a role, that mm -hmm. make you feel like you're role-playing. In ESO, I can go up to a shrine and I can actually pray, or I can kneel and pray. I can play dead in front of people and, you know, hopefully they'll think I'm dead and pass me by, like bandits, whatnot. Obviously that doesn't happen in the game, but mm -hmm. the little emotes or whatever they call them, social things, that kind of stuff is what we're talking about. In Morrowind, you couldn't sit down on chairs. That frustrated me to no end. In Oblivion, you could. That was an improvement. Mm -hmm. That's an RPG element. You're able to play the role of someone who's sitting there at a the table eating food. That's great. Skyrim had, you know, similar things where you could mine ores and whatnot, but why can't I go out to a crop field and start farming? Mm -hmm. Why can't I go mountain climbing? Why can't I do all of these things? You should be able to mine, mountain climb. You, if you can mountain climb in Zelda, which you can in the newer one, you should mountain, be able to mountain climb in the next Elder Scrolls game. <laughs> well, you can mountain climb in Daggerfall. There's actually a skill for it, Dave, mm -hmm. which I'd love to see in the next Elder Scrolls. But, you know, just giving these extra little things. It's the little things, Bethesda, that make the game great let me be able to take on that role and i will say skyrim did a really good job with allowing quite a few things mm -hmm. um i actually role played for a while a character who made a living of chopping wood i just completely said screw the main quest i'm gonna you know live near this lumber yard i'm gonna mm -hmm. chop wood and that was my life you use the money to buy food and whatnot and you can have the necessity to eat and sleep as an option well yeah, you could definitely on PC, if you want to role play, it's with mods. It's unbelievable what you oh, can yeah. do with Skyrim. It, it um, is, and it, like I said, this is one instance where I'm saying Skyrim did a great job. Yeah, Skyrim in that regard, mm -hmm. being able to role play your character is the best one out of all the Elder Scrolls game, in my opinion. It's, Not in terms of skills per se. Skills, yeah, but, but just, other things. Yeah, see, there's good balance. If they had the skills and attributes of Morrowind with the role playing ability of Skyrim, it'd be interesting. And it, you it probably never want to leave the house though. <laughs> I don't want to leave the house as it is, Dave. Morrowind's <laughs> here. I'm safe here. Well, you could get Morrowind on your phone. I know, eventually. I need to get Morrowind on my phone. But And yes, I can do that with OpenMW. That's another story. Uh, but it's these little things in the game that make it great. You know, in, in having the option to do I know people say, well, the animations aren't necessary. It, it kind of is. I want to be able to see my character sit down. I want to see them kneel down and pray because it brings you further into the immersion. Immersion. 
And like I said, Skyrim did a pretty good job of this, I just want to see it expanded more. Look at what the modding community has done with this game. Mm -hmm. The need to eat, sleep, and drink, the ability to do animations, and even Morrowind has some mods that make it so you can do things like that, like go and pray and whatnot. Like the, the, there's the religion mod for Skyrim, really yeah. good. And that's another thing. Give the character the ability to choose a religion and practice their religion. Mm. These kind of things let you roleplay a character and have a real story. Let them build their own story. If I want to be somebody who worships the tribunal Daedra, mm. I should be able to join up with that and live out that kind of lifestyle and maybe have a farm on the side and maybe be a woodworker. One thing I do want to say is I kind of think this is going to be kind of hard to do, although I'm pretty sure there's some mods that allow you to do somewhat of this, is you should be able to kind of make a house anywhere. Um, now, what I mean by that is if you want to play, let's say, as a necromancer, mm -hmm. and you find some place full of bandits, and you want to start making some undead warriors, you should be able to take that little place over. Yeah, that's a good place, too, to get some undead warriors. That's a real <laughs> good place. <laughs> And that's the thing, we want these kinds of things in there, because while Skyrim has improved upon those sorts of things, it hasn't gotten to the level yet that I would like to see. And again, I will quote ESO, and I know this is sacrilegious for us to say we actually enjoy ESO somewhat, but ESO has done a good job on this. I can be a woodworker, I can be a metalworker, I can be an enchanter, I can be an alchemist, I can do all of these things, and I can do all these other animations, such as raking and whatnot, and sweeping. I can just live this fake make-believe life in this world, and it's fun, and it's actually really funny, some of the things you can do. Go on top of the rock and the next antlers, looking down over everything, sit in a chair, just watch everyone fighting and stuff. Being able to do these things, being able to have a religion, being able to take over a cave, like Dave said, or make a house anywhere, even if it's a small shack. I was going to say, there's actually another, I remember the reason I said it like Necromancer is because there's two mods that you have to install together that literally let you do that. I yeah. forgot about that. Um, well, and that's, it, that's the thing we're looking for. It, Fable. You can actually be a merchant in Fable. You don't have to play the game at all. Mm -hmm. You can just be a merchant going from town to town. Buy things in one town, sell them in another. You can do the same thing in they Mountain make money. Blade Warband. Yeah. yeah. Mountain Blade Warband, I think Fire and Sword had it too. Mm -hmm. And I think just and Mountain Blade I think had all of them. It. I think all of them have it where you can just buy things in a certain town, go to another town, sell them. Live your life as a trader. Yeah, you might get attacked on the side, but that's why you hire bodyguards or take up some martial arts to protect yourself. These tiny little things all come together as one gigantic thing in any role playing game. And the Elder Scrolls, in some ways, have gotten away from role-playing games because they've gotten real skills and stats and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But in other ways, have you know gotten better. We want to see a good fusion of all the good role-playing elements in one game. Yeah, I do want to end with saying that Fallout 4 was by far the worst game to role-play in that I think Bethesda has ever put out. Uh, for one, your character was voiced. That which ruined it. You yeah. didn't have a whole lot of options. The skills weren't there. So because there, it was never that kind of game. Almost to begin with, Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas, you couldn't really do. You could pick what kind of gun you liked. Like you like big guns, small guns. I and like I, the small guns. I have nothing to overcompensate for. Yeah, or actually, I think Fallout. See, they simplified it in New Vegas. It was small guns, big guns. I think Fallout Three had pistols, rifles, shotguns. I think that's what. Anyway, point is that don't do Fallout Four. Because it was bad. <laughs> it was. It, Bethesda should be ashamed. Granted, I think they've said before that's kind of the direction they wanted to take Fallout. They wanted to... I've heard, read before they want to take Elder Scrolls in more of an RPG direction and make Fallout... Se the Fallout series more of a... story Story-driven shooter game. I, that's what I've kind of read. I don't know how true that is, but... They shouldn't do that. <laughs> they shouldn't. But yeah, like we said, RPG elements, that's what makes a game that's supposed to be an RPG. So, that's pretty much the top 15 things we think the game needs to have, the next Elder Scrolls game needs to have, to be a great Elder Scrolls game. Now, it could have a mix of these things, it could just do maybe one or two of these things really well. And still be better than having none of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not really much more we can add. We want to know what your top 15 things are, what you think Bethesda needs to add into the next game to make it a good Elder Scrolls game. Mm -hmm. Not Dragon's Dogma, not Fall, Elder Scrolls. Just, just keep not focused. Skyrim 2, Elder, Elder Scrolls. Scrolls. The whole thing. So you can, you can pick things from Daggerfall and Arena if you really want to. Uh, let us know what you thought of our top 15. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more Elder Scrolls 6 content. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, go ahead and tell us what you want us to do next in our Elder Scrolls 6 or just Elder Scrolls in general discussion series down below in the comments. Please. Casuals.